Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. It is time to start final fabrication of the rear sections of the flatbed tray on our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso camper conversion. The final pieces to finish off the front and the back of this flatbed tray are going to be made out of 1 8 inch thick aluminum. The aluminum is going to come flat off the top and have a 90 degree bend going down the back. That bend is going to be made using my home built 30 ton press brake right over there. Now as much as I'd love to just cut a piece, chuck it in the bender and end up with a perfectly bent piece, that's generally not how it works. What I want to do first is bend up a test piece. So I have here a small piece of 1 8 inch thick aluminum, the same stuff that I'm making the pieces out of. I'm going to do some measurements on here and determine where I need to put that bend so that I get the six inches on the inside at the top and the remainder hanging down below. Okay, so what do I mean by six inches to the inside of the bend? Well, basically, if I come exactly six inches out, I'm going to be right at the back edge of the steel. But because my bend is going to have a radius, it would end up pushing it back a little. So what I want is six inches to the inside face of the aluminum not six inches to the outside face of the aluminum. Now, if I recall, my press brake is going to add about half of the thickness of the material to the bend. So being that this is 1 8 inch thick aluminum, I'm gonna add 1 16th of an inch. So if I was to mark this at six inches right here, look at that. When I do my bend, the material will extend a 16th of an inch past that six inch mark. Now, at the same time, before I bend it, I've put marks on here from 14 inches to 16 inches, just so that I can see where the tail end would come out with a bend at six inches. Unless you've seen my press break before, you probably don't understand how this thing works. It's a little bit of a crazy contraption. But, very simply, this is an air control valve, and up here is an air pressure gauge. Right now I've got 100... 90 psi, so I probably need a little bit more air, the compressor will kick on. But this control valve here lifts the press brake up and down. So the lower beam in the press brake where the dies are has air cylinders on the side that lift it up. And then I've got a 30 ton air over hydraulic bottle jack that pushes it back down. So if I lift this up, I may get the press brake coming up. I might need a bit more air pressure. There we go. So that's lifted it off of my stop blocks. Take my safety blocks out. And we should be good to make a test bend. So now that the safety blocks out of the way, there's nothing stopping other than the air pressure. This from coming down and pushing these dies into the die. Sorry, these tools into this die. I'm not a technical press brake operator, so I'll call things the wrong thing. It's going to press the pointy bit into the notchy bit. I want to put my pointy bit on the six inch line. So I'm going to put it in here like this. I'm going to release the air pressure slowly to let that come down and sit in place on the part. And then I'll air up the hydraulic jack to push it down with the force that it needs to bend the aluminum. It's going to get a little bit loud, so I'll probably overdub some music right about. Now that I've got it just resting on there, there's no air pressure in the lift cylinders, I can start putting air pressure into the hydraulic jack, which is gonna start pushing down. It's not the fastest press brake in the world, but it works. Now, unfortunately, because this is such a narrow piece, it's pretty easy to put too much force on it, which I did. I slightly overbent it and I cracked the back, but this is a test piece, so that's okay. I was able to straighten it back out again. We've got a good 90 degree bend there. And when I bend the full size parts, won't be nearly as much of a concern because the same amount of force will be spread over a much larger area, so it's a lot less likely to get overbent. But let's see how this piece fits. So I've just used a couple of magnets to hold this in place temporarily. Yes, you heard that right. Magnets and aluminum. 
I know, I'm cheating. They're just pulling it tight against the steel. It looks like we've got a pretty good fit up top. Maybe at most, I'd want to add a sixteenth of an inch or so. And then down at the bottom here, can you get in the back there? Oh, you're not going to be able to see, it's too dark. Down at the back, I would say we want to be right about where my thumb is there. And if I flip that over, we're at about 15 and a half inches for total part size. So now that I've done the mock-up bend and I've done the cardboard CAD, I can cut the pieces that I need to bend into the final parts. My total length on this piece, vertical, so up and across the top, is going to be 15 and a half inches, and then whatever length I need for the three pieces going across the back. Now it may surprise you, but the easiest way that I have found to cut this eighth inch aluminum is with my DeWalt cordless saw. Now, I'm using a 40 tooth carbide blade on here and it cuts through this stuff like butter. You may want to have the larger, this is a six amp hour battery to make more than one cut at a time, but does a great job of doing it. Now, because the back of the truck is just under 83 inches wide, it's easy for me to do one cut on this sheet, which is just over 90 inches wide. 83 inches is about here. If I do a single cut at 15 and a half inches all the way across, I'll get enough material for all three of those pieces out of one piece cut off the big sheet. two blanks cut for the side pieces. I'm going to do a quick zip around the outside edges with the flat disc on my grinder just to get rid of any roughness and then we'll mark the pieces up, throw them in the bender. Before I mark off my six inches on here for my bend line, last time on my test bend, I was about a sixteenth of an inch short here. So I'm actually going to go at six and a sixteenth to give me just that little bit more here. I'd rather be able to take a little bit off with a grinder and have it nice and flush than try and add more. Making my mark, six and a sixteenth. I want my sixteenth to be right in the middle of my mark, two spots, now just as a double check, I'm going to go off the edge, should be square, now line square to that edge, hopefully if it's square to one edge it's square to the other. And square to that edge. It looks like we're in good shape for our first bend line. And some of you keen-eyed fabricators may have noticed that I only have about 18 inches of tooling in my press brake right now, which means I've got to change out the tooling for enough to cover a 28 and a half inch bend. Right now, this is my center line. There's nine inches, which equals 18. I need to come to here, which is 12 is going to be 24 inches, and this is about two inches past. That's going to equal about 28 inches. So I need to loosen these bolts from about the 18 or 36 inch mark all the way back to the other 18 or overall 36 inch mark. Because I don't want the tool to fall out when I loosen these bolts, the first thing I have to do is lower it down so that this tool is actually resting in the bottom here. Stop locks out. And lower it down, nice and slow. Okay. So this is now just barely resting in here. I can loosen these bolts up and this won't fall out. It is pretty heavy. Next up is lifting this back up again so that I can take these pieces out and replace them with a larger tool so I can get 28 inches. Back up on the air. This piece will probably lift up with it. Not all of it. 
So you can see I've got this made in sections and that allows me to set different sizes based on what I need. And you think, well, why wouldn't you just have the full thing in there all the time? Because if I have a part with bends up on the edges, this is what's known as a box pan break. I can do a bend this way, and then I can have edges in here while I make a bend this way. I don't do that very often, but it is something I can do. It looks like I'm gonna need my mallet or my block of wood. Sometimes it doesn't like letting go. All right, that's the profile of the die that I'm using. It's called a gooseneck die. So with that out, this is my 24 inch section. So we'll get that one in. In case you're wondering, they're pretty heavy. 24 plus six, it's gonna get me 30. there. So if we slide those together, I want that as close as I can to being centered. So there's, oh, I'm gonna come that way a little bit. Right about there, the center line is on the center of the die. So we're pretty close. Now what I need to do is at the same time as lowering this, get these to slot up into there and then go back and tighten all those bolts back up again. One aluminum plate marked with six and a sixteenth. Press brake set with enough tool and die in there to bend it. Let's chuck it in the brake, double check some measurements, see what happens. Now that we've bottomed out the tool in the part, we should have pretty close to a 90 degree bend. I'm gonna release the pressure from the jack and then lift with the air cylinders on each side, take the part out and check and see how close we are to 90 degrees. It's easy to put back in and bend it a little more. It's a little bit harder to flatten it back out. Let's see what happens. So I gotta drop the jack all the way down so I have room for the bar to come up. Hopefully we got enough air pressure, we should. We got just under 120 PSI, so this should lift up. There we go. Out comes the part. We're definitely not quite at 90 degrees. Close, but we can put it back in. Give it a little bit more. Again, much easier to add more bend than to take bend away. So now I'm just gonna release the air pressure again from the sides. Completely released, the part held in. And then we'll lift up on the jack again. Getting closer. Couple more pushes like that, we should be good at 90. Well, there we go, two end caps on the back of the flatbed. Of course, they're not finished, but so far, got a nice 90 degree bend there. Nice and tight to the deck boards. We come over here, fit nice and tight with the back of the subframe. So what we've got to do next is build the end caps. Since the piece that I have left over for the center cap is larger than I need, I'll be cutting a six and a 16th inch wide strip off of one end to make my end caps for the side plates. And just like that, they're cut. Time to clean up the edges and break out the TIG welder.
I'll have to admit it's not perfect, but it'll do. Let's take a closer look. And obviously welding the other side is going to look virtually identical, so I'll save you the 30 seconds of fast forwarded footage and let's just look at them on the truck. Side number one, welded up in place. I'm going to cut that corner off on the same angle as the steel down here. Side number two, welded up. This is my favorite weld so far. I think that one came out all right. Not there yet, but we are getting close. I've done another bend. And we now have three pieces across the back. Look at that, starting to look like a truck. I'm probably gonna run out of time, but I got one more thing I can get done, and that is little brackets that are gonna hold the outer portions of this to the inner portion of the subframe. What I'm talking about is a little bracket to go up against the inner portion of the subframe and get welded to the bottom of the outer portion of the back. And that's also going to end up being the support for the center section, which will get screwed in to that little flat. So I'm going to weld these up with the TIG welder, weld them onto the bottom of this, and that should be it. Wow. That didn't work. Way too hot. Not the best, but it didn't melt it. You know, one nice thing about being in Canada in the winter, when you get one of these, it's too hot to hold, chuck it in the snow. Yuck. There we go. Not too hot anymore. Outside edge, nice and flush with the edge of the T-slot tracking. Bring it around to the inside. Got our little bracket that's set for the middle piece to land on and also pushed up against the subframe so we can put a bolt through here to hold it in place. Got a quick little tack weld on there. I can flip it over and weld the other side. All right, let's see if we can do this without dragging the tungsten all over the place. Apparently not. There we go. Not the prettiest of welds going on right now. I don't know if my hands are just shaky or what, but not the prettiest of welds. Not going to fall apart, but definitely not the nicest. And now we have two support tabs welded on the outer wings. These tabs have the bracket going underneath to bolt to this inside edge of the frame. Third and final center piece. Needs a tiny bit of tweaking. There you go. and it's starting to look like the back of a truck. Needs some tail lights, but we'll leave that for next time. That's as far as I'm gonna get. Unfortunately, I did wanna get a little bit further, but I'm running out of time. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you got a question, throw it down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to answer it. And don't worry, there's plenty more to come. So please remember to come back next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.